Sometimes the retelling of a feud reads like a dime store novel from the early 1900s. The Hargis Caldwell Cockrell feud is such a story. The feud began with a duel inside of a passenger train coach. Later, there would be a contested election and the deaths of several more people. We had divided the story of this feud in order to include each family that was involved. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. The Death of John Tig Hargis According to the website Bloody Breathick, Kentucky, The Feuds and Wars John Hargis, known as Tig, was the brother to Judge Hargis and was killed by Jerry Caldwell. John Hargis had boarded a train in Jackson and his destination would be Beattyville. It is claimed by witnesses of the event that Hargis became disorderly. The train conductor, Captain Tom Shelby, called on the train detective, Jerry Caldwell, to bring peace to the situation. As Caldwell entered the car, both Hargis and Caldwell drew their guns and fired. Hargis was dead from a bullet to the heart and Caldwell was wounded. The Hargis faction would claim that there were others involved, but these accusations were never proven. The Washington Times gives another account to the duel in a crowded passenger train car. Quote, Caldwell was the train detective, while Hargis adopted the role of a disorderly passenger until the conductor called in Caldwell. At once, both mounted men went for revolvers, and Hargis was shot to death after wounding his opponent three times. Jerry Caldwell was sentenced for two years in the penitentiary, but never served any part of his sentence as he was pardoned by Governor Bradley, unquote. There is a saying in the mountains that goes, you get what you came for. Now this may seem like a harsh saying, but it is a stark reminder that if you pick a fight, you might not always be on the winning side of things. And it seems that for Hargis, that might have been the case. Another thing to consider is that he killed Sally Hayes for being a sympathizer for the opposing faction and for being an eyewitness to a murder. For more on the death of Sally Hayes, please see Part 1, Bloody Breathitt County, The hargis sewell Cockrell Feud. The Death of William Swall In our tally, we have an unlisted death, that is, of William Swall, half-brother to John Hargis. He is said to have died shortly after his half-brother. We found this quite by accident while reading through our sources, and this is what we could find out about his death. According to William Swall's Find a Grave website, quote, On September 14, 1887, Willie was shot in the back, known as being ambushed, while he was making molasses out in the yard on his farm along Frozen Creek. He then fell into a big vat of boiling hot molasses. Some people were able to pull him out, but he soon died. He had earlier shot and wounded, some sources says, that he killed Jerry South. So perhaps this was for revenge? Unquote. According to the same source, Robert Frazier and another man were charged with the murder of Swall. However, they were acquitted. No one else was ever charged for the crime and we tend to wonder if this is the reason why he was not listed in the tally that was given to us by the semi-weekly messenger. The Contested Election There was a voter tilt in Breathitt County at that time. It seemed that the Hargis faction had more people willing to vote Democrat in the county. This would make the Republicans feel that they did not have fair representation in the area. This all came to a head during the Breathitt County election of 1902. James Jim Cockrell was the town marshal. There was an election for the seats of county judge and sheriff of Breathitt County. The St. Louis Republic gives us a statement about it. Quote, During the spring election in 1902, 
The contest came up over the office of county judge and sheriff, and the feudists took sides. Jim and Tom Cockrell, nephews of Caldwell, were just reaching manhood, and Jim was elected town marshal. The Hargis faction, of course, did not like him because he was a Caldwell man, and when he arrested some of the Hargis boys, they threatened him, unquote. The Ventia Daily Chieftain gives this report, quote, James B. Markham was a Mountain Republican lawyer of excellent standing. He was engaged three years ago as an attorney in the contest against Hargis and Callahan, respectively Democratic judge and sheriff-elect, to oust them from their offices on the allegation of corrupt elections. Much bitterness was aroused and frequent open ruptures occurred, unquote. As Paul Harvey once stated, here is the rest of the story. We did find a source that shed more light as to what went on between the three men. According to the website, Bloody Breath It, Kentucky, The Feuds and Wars. There was far more to the election conflict. The site claims that James B. Markham and O. H. Pollard were law partners. Markham would be the attorney for the Hargis faction and Pollard would be the attorney for the Democrats. One day, the two men were taking their positions in Markham's office, with Hargis and Callahan present. They were disagreeing on how to cross-examine a witness. What was said is not known, however. The two sides directly contradicted the other side. The argument got heated and almost became a fistfight with pistols drawn. Markham ordered everyone out of his office. Warrants were issued by City Judge T.P. Caldwell, Jr., Markham immediately pled guilty and paid a fine of $20. Hargis and Caldwell were well known to be enemies for 10 years at this point, and Hargis did not want to go before him with this case. So he went to Magistrate Edwards, who was a personal friend, for the trial. Edwards was not sure if he had jurisdiction in the case and did not try the case at that time. Because Hargis refused to appear before Judge Callahan over the warrants, Jim Cockrell, the town marshal, backed by his brother Tom, drew the pistols and forced the issue. According to the same source, there are two sides to the story. Markham made the following statement to a correspondent. Quote, Tom Cockrell went to arrest Hargis, and Hargis refused to surrender and attempted to pull his pistol. But Tom beat him to it and covered him. Callahan, who was standing near, covered Tom with his pistol, and in turn, Jim Cockrell covered Callahan. Hargis and Callahan saw that the Cockrells had the drop on them and surrendered. I sent word to Caldwell that I did not want to prosecute Hargis, which was done, and the incident passed away without bloodshed, unquote. The website also has Hargis' statement, quote, I was Callahan's prisoner and was to have been tried by Magistrate Edwards. The Cockrells and I were best of friends up until that time. I had made Tom town marshal. Suddenly, and without warning, both of them threw their pistols down on me, and I believe would have assassinated me had not Callahan interfered. Just then, Markham sent word to Caldwell that he was to blame for the entire difficulty and asked that the charges against me be dismissed. I was never able to explain who got the Cockrells to try to assassinate me. Unquote. So we have to question, who exactly was the town marshal? We have several sources that state that the town marshal was James and others that state that it was Thomas. Could it have been that the two brothers were so close that James was the marshal and Thomas was his chief deputy, acting in his name on several occasions, thus the confusion? Or could it have been the other way around? Either way, one brother was the marshal and the other backed him up in this conflict. Tom Cockrell and Ben Hargis Tom Cockrell was considered to be the leader of the Cockrell faction of the feud. He had also drawn his pistol in a courtroom when he backed his brother to serve warrants on Hargis and Markham. This did not bode well for him as the Hargis faction meant to get rid of him, so a trap was laid. According to the St. Louis Republic, quote, Ben Hargis sent out and asked Tom Cockrell to come in and drink with him. Just what was said between them was never told. But they drew their revolvers and upon meeting, and Hargis was killed, unquote. There are other reports about this fight. 
according to the semi-weekly messenger, quote, Tom Cockrell was especially offensive to the Hargis party as a leader of the opposing faction, and it was desirable to get rid of him. Ben Hargis laid a plan to get Cockrell into a saloon and then kill him. Cockrell fell into the trap, but in the attempt at assassination, Ben Hargis was killed and Tom Cockrell was only wounded, unquote. Tom Cockrell would receive two bullet wounds in the saloon. Ben Hargis was mortally wounded and died shortly after the gunfight at his home. His killer is listed as Tom Cockrell. Cockrell did not face any charges for this as it was deemed as self-defense. The Death of Henry Smith The county judge at the time was James Hargis. Even though he was charged in his official duties to keep the peace in the county, he was not able to do so. According to the semi-weekly messenger, quote, James Hargis was a county judge. His office was to maintain the peace, but the feud spirit inspired and infuriated him, and he shot and killed a man named Smith, who had become a member of the Cockrell family by marriage, unquote. The man named Smith was Henry Smith. We looked everywhere for this conflict and what happened there that caused Judge James Hargis to shoot Henry Smith to no avail. Hopefully in the future, more articles and documents will become available and we can get a full story as to what happened there. In our next look at this feud, we will get into the Hargis Jet Cockrell feud. In that section, we will cover the shooting of Dr. B.H. Cox, Town Marshal James Cockrell, and the shooting of attorney James Markham. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Feuds. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries in Appalachian history.